Hey, we're in our series called A Book of Ephesians from Identity to Destiny. How many of you like animals? You like, you like animals? Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you ever noticed that animals sometimes look like their owners? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I used to have a paper route back, way back when, in the 1830s. And I had a, I had a paper route, and uh, I, there was this woman that was a chain smoker, and she looked like a handbag, or, or I'm sorry, but she, I mean, she would literally was like a smoking bag. And when she'd open up, hi, I reckon, her, I mean, smoke would come out of her mouth. The whole apartment smelled like smoke. It was smoke stained, and then she had this little pug. <coughs> and, the, and the thing would be coughing up. She'd be coughing up, and they looked like identical twins. Anyhow, that's a, but, uh, but sometimes we find people, that they're like, they end up looking like they're animals, right? Uh, I don't know who's imitating too, if we're imitating the animals or the animals are imitating us, but we see this kind of happening. Uh, here's another one. I wish I had his hair. Uh, here's another one I thought was interesting. And, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks like my husband. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, here we go. And here's another one. I like that one a lot. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, how about that? If you know who that is, you need to get saved. All right, here we go. And, <laughs> and yeah. And, and what's so interesting is, you know, we often, we mimic. It's interesting. How many of you have ever seen spouses that begin to look alike? I'm praying that my wife never looks like me, but I pray I look more like her. But, and, and so it's very interesting that, therefore, the Bible says, we're, our passage today, and we're, our whole passage today is this, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. God wants us to imitate. And hopefully, when we imitate, we'll start looking like who we're imitating. Whoever we model after, we will actually become. Whoever you model yourself like, whatever you look at, Whatever you focus upon, you will become. And the question is, who are we going to focus our lives upon? Now, what's so interesting here, I'm going to embarrass my son because he's not here, but I, I, I saw this picture the other day, and this is my son, Luke, when, a couple years ago. Uh, look at that. We had the same facial expressions. <laughs> I had a little more hair back then. Anyhow, it's just I just okay, I, I'm just having fun with myself. I, can I make fun of myself? But don't you make fun of me, Okay. So it's all about that. Your identity leads to your destiny. What you think about yourself will actually lead to where you go. It's extremely important how God has made us. God has made us a people like himself. And so what we think about, what we focus upon is what we'll drive towards, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And the enemy's job is to get us to think wrongly about God and wrongly about ourselves. If he can get us to think wrongly about God, even an atheist who doesn't think about God is going to mess their life up or think wrongly about yourself, you got someone totally, right? That's the spiritual battle primarily is in the mind. It's the front lines. It's the front lobby. So we've been talking that your identity leads to your destiny. And so Ephesians is all about finding your identity. The first three chapters were more uh, theoretical, and the last three chapters are more, uh, more practical. But today we're going to be looking at what it means. And the Bible says, therefore, be imitators of God. Now, why does it say therefore? Because what's it there for? So we're going to go back for a few moments and look at what the therefore, what came before? What is the Apostle Paul talking about here? As he's writing to a church in the area of Ephesus, he's in prison writing this, by the way. It was a very pagan society. It made Las Vegas look like Disney World, which is getting like Las Vegas. But that's another point. Therefore, therefore, what's all about that? Well, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons, okay? He's called all of, even women can be sons. I know it's popular these days to do that kind of thing, but let me explain. <laughs> to be sons is simply mean this. Women did not have rights to, to have property. Only the males did. So all of us are sons of God. What that simply means is all the access, all the availability, what God has for us is in Christ, all right? So, and the Bible says there's no male, there's no female, there's no slave, there's no free. We're all equal in value before God. Not we all have, we have different functions, but we're equal in value before God. The Bible's very clear about that, okay? So he predestined us for adoption himself as sons, how? Through who? Jesus Christ, okay? 
and, and says also, as we continue in Ephesians, it's by grace you've been saved through faith. By grace, unmerited favor. And it's not of your own doing. It's a gift that we didn't earn, right? But you had to at least open it. It's a gift of God, not a result of works that no one could boast. The moment you think, oh, I can't believe those people over there. I can't believe what they're doing in our society today. We start getting this attitude, and we start, you know, we're almost like, a, almost like a landlord driving through the neighborhood and going, I can't believe what they're doing in this neighborhood. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to evict them. And we had this kind of attitude like we're better than anyone else. Man, look out. Instead, if not by the grace of God, I could be on the street. If not by the grace of God, I might be transitioning to something. If not by the grace of God, I might be in prison. When you understand who you are without God, then you can understand who you are with God. You're thankful for it, and you're gracious towards that. And so, for by grace you've been saved through faith. That's right. You, you accept what God has done. It's not of your own doing. It's a gift of God, not as a result of works that anyone can boast. And then we get into 423, and he wants us to be what? Renewed in the spirit of our mind. So what really what we want to do here at Cornerstone is we believe we believe in brainwashing. We pray to God that you're brainwashed today. That's why we've locked the doors. <laughs> Until you say what I say. No, brainwashing simply is washing the toxins out of our brains and getting the right thoughts. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. My ways are higher than your thoughts, right? We want to have the mind of Christ, not the minds of lies. And so it takes time if you ever put cucumbers in pickle juice, it takes a while before the cucumbers become pickles. you got to let it soak and soak and soak, right? And so we want to soak our minds to the, such a point that we have the mind of Jesus Christ. Be renewed in the spirits of your mind by thinking the right thoughts, by practicing the right thoughts, and to put on the new self. We talk about taking off, right, and putting on. Taking off and picking, putting on. We want to take off the old. Remember, we don't want to stop doing something. We want to what? Replace. We don't stop, we replace. We stop something and we replace it. We don't just stop doing something and leave it void. So put on the new self created in the likeness of God in true righteousness. And then we talked about this. It's so important. Now we're getting to our passage today. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a personality, part of who God is. Okay, and you can grieve the Holy Spirit. And who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is who's with us, gives us power to overcome. We believe also we can pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit so you can become stronger in Christ, and you can grieve the Holy Spirit how you and I act. We can actually repel the Holy Spirit in our life. I don't know about you, but I want to have God in me. I want to have more of God. So do not grieve. How do you grieve? By whom you were sealed in the day of redemption. How do you grieve? Let all bitterness and wrath, and anger, and calmer, and slender be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, even on the way to church. Okay, there's about five of you that had the problem this morning coming to church. And for you that are watching at home because you got too much of an argument, come next week. Okay, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, but forgiving one another as Christ has forgiven you. This is how you invite the power in the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, is we reject the toxicity of our own human thoughts. We have three main enemies in our life. We have the world system, we have the devil, and we have an unrenewed mind. And so what we want to do is change our unrenewed mind and get it renewed. All right? So be kind to one or forgiving one another. Here we are today. Okay? That's the therefore. Now today. Be imitators of God as beloved children. Imitators means to mimic. Do you ever have anyone mimic you? It's kind of a negative connotation, isn't it? He's mimicking me. Stop mimicking me. No, actually, mimic is what God wants us to do. He wants us to act like Jesus. God wants you to act like God. Yeah, I, I, my spouse thinks they're God. I, they don't need to act like God anymore. No, 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 not like that. We're supposed to act like God, who God is. We're made in his image. We're made in his image, everybody. And so how do you know you're dressed appropriately? You look in a mirror. So what you and I need to do is put up a mirror. We need to face towards God. God is our mirror. Do I look like Jesus? Do I talk like Jesus? Do I think like Jesus? You see, everybody, the truth of the matter is the more we're like Christ, the more free we are. 
the more we're like the world, the more in bondage we are, the more frustration we have, the more arguments we have. I'm telling you, I have learned, and I'm learning more and more. The more I surrender to Jesus, the more I say, I'm doing it your way, not my way, is the time I'm the happiest. I have the greatest flexibility. I have less anxiety because now God is fighting for me. I don't have to fight for myself. This is the way we are to live our lives. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in agape, which is walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering. So what does it mean to be God imitators? You ever hear he's got a Messiah complex? No, we don't want that. Okay, what does it mean to be imitators of God? How do we become imitators? Well, Bible says this, you will therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Great. <laughs> okay, everybody, I'm going to tell you, we're going to go home in a few seconds. Be perfect as God's perfect. You may go. No, no, don't go. Now, that's frustrating, is it not? Be perfect as I'm perfect. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Is that what God's calling us to be, is perfect? Do I have to be, do I have to follow these rules and regulations, and then maybe God will love me enough? I'll be good enough if I do this. I can... Listen, everybody, I would have quit a long time ago because I'm not good as some of you are, right? You got all your stuff together. No, 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 it's not. We must be perfect. We must be, that's the, uh, that's, the per, that's the goal is to be perfect like God. But we can't be perfect on this love, but that's the goal. And so if we're trying to be perfect by doing rules, by doing all the, the rules are important, but that's not it. We get perfect by mimicking God. Through relationship. How about children? What do, what do babies do? <laughs> right? Oh, give me little Johnny. You're so cute. And, and the kid's, the kid's like four months old. This is what you're talking about. Right? <laughs> and you start acting like that. Right? So you start doing all that. Hey, little Johnny. Little, or little Susie. And you start talking to the little child. And what do you do? That child maybe has 12 words, if that, by a year old. But you keep talking to the child as if the child is smarter than they are at that time. You use language beyond that child. If you just stay and speak to that baby in that language, it will never grow. You have to stretch that baby by believing that that, 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 that baby is going to be a man or a woman. You speak to them, right? You speak sentences. You, and, and as they do, they mimic you. They copy you. That's right. Have you ever seen it happen? I did. I was driving with my parents. And my wife and I, I don't know what it is. We, I'm getting better at this, but I, I tend to struggle with getting lost when I'm driving, even with the GPS. I have the watch that actually vibrates to tell me to make a turn, and I still miss it. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I get possessed by something, and I start blaming my wife for missing the turn. <laughs> and I'm like, honey, why didn't you tell me? You're driving. I know, but you should tell me. All right? And so I get upset with her, and then we get in there. My kids are back. I go, they're rolling their eyes. Well, one day I was driving my parents, and guess what happened to my parents? My dad missed a turn. And guess what my dad did? Dad, I'm sorry. He said a birthday. He's 88 years old now. Anyhow, he missed his turn. And they, I said, oh, my God, uh, help me. I said it in a rude way. Oh, my God, I'm just like my parents. <laughs> right? I started copying what they were doing. We often mimic. We all model. We, we, we are communicable people. We, we copy each other. That's what the Bible says. Do not hang out with an angry man unless you become like one. A bad company corrupts morals. See, whatever you look at, whatever you look at, whatever you follow, whatever you keep your eyes upon, you will become, including negativity. If all you do is listen to bad news all day long, all day long you have this news channel on, all day long, all these horrible things. You're going to be walking around. Can you believe what's happening in our culture today? And you're walking around with a cane, hitting everyone over the head. You're angry because all you do is look at the news. Well, that's okay to look at the news. But all day long, we need to focus on what we're supposed to be. And what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to mimic God. We're supposed to look at God and act like God. We're supposed to be like God. So he's not asking us to do rules. He's asking us to follow him. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I am following my father, not rules. Okay? It's real simple. Real simple. Jesus is God, and I am not. I, God, whatever you say, I'm willing to put aside my likes 
And I don't care if every other church is doing it. I don't care if every other Christian is doing it. Your word says this, and I will do it. We need to listen, and I'm going to follow. I'm going to mimic. I'm going I'm to go before that mirror, and we have to grind that mirror until we see the image of Christ. I see Christ in myself. And there have been times where I'm like, wow, five years ago, I would have never responded that way. I look more like Jesus. Don't you want to look more like your father? Don't you want to have your father's eyes, as an old song used to say? Or don't you want to be like a book in the book of Acts? They said they were uneducated men, but they could tell they were with Jesus. They looked like him. You know what used to happen in, in, the, in the days of old? You would hang out with your rabbi. If you're Jewish and you're being trained by your rabbi, and they'd say that you, you begin to carry the dust of your rabbi. You begin to smell like your rabbi. I pray that we have the, have the, have the uh, fragrance of Jesus in our lives by copying him. Therefore, you must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So how do we do it? Know you are a child of God. That's the important thing. If you don't, if you don't think you're a child of God, if you think, oh, God, if you pray, dear God, here's God. Oh, gosh, that's Eric again. <sighs> Tell him I'm at home. Uh, better yet, put him right the voicemail. Man, vo by the way, if you put someone in the voicemail, that is really an insult, okay? I've been sent the voicemail. Okay, I find it, I find it, I just text people. I don't send them the voicemail anymore, okay? You send someone the voicemail, you basically tell them I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> no, but no, you are, just God just put his head, oh, I can't, no. God is like, I love my child. You know, there's been times with my own kids. I remember uh, my daughter was going on and on and on and on, and, and, and I just saw her, she was crying, and I just knew what she was crying about was, was wrong, and she didn't know it, and I just looked at her with love. I'm like, oh, Lord, thank you. I get to be a dad here. And you know what? She's going to be okay. And I looked at her with love because I wanted to see her do the right thing, right? And so what, she's a child of mine. She's my child. I care more about her than I care about the rules. The rules are important, but I don't, she's not made for rules. She's made because of my daughter. My kids are made, right? They're not made for rules, they're made for relationship with myself and God. And so this is what we want to do. We want to know that you are a child. You need to know that you're a child of God, and God loves you if you give your life to Christ. God loves you. And it's very difficult for you to become like Jesus until you love yourself. Amen. Pastor, you're getting to all this, uh, this pop psychology of loving yourself. No, you better love yourself. You know why? Because God loves you. He loves you. He loves you just the way you are, but he loves you way too much. I love my kids, but do I want my kids constantly be in diapers? No, I want to see them grow up. I want to see them, and sometimes I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll grab them and say, hey, you need to stop. Why? I want to see what their potential is. I believe in my children, right? God believes in you, and you ought to love yourself because God loves you. If you don't love yourself, you're being prideful. Because you don't think you're good enough, and God says you are good enough. Why does God say you're good enough? You pretend to be like God, and God pretends you're Jesus. Say, what, Willis? What's that all about? <laughs> if you don't know what that is, hmm? everyone over 50 just laughed. Everyone under 50 is like, what is he talking about? Okay. <laughs> TV land, okay? Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, Yes. Okay, praise the Lord. This is what happens when you need to get a drink of water. Okay, go on. But all kidding aside, what we want to do is we want to think what we want to be like. All right, who am I? I am a child of God. So God pretends you're Jesus. Now, you need to pretend you're like Jesus. How can you say that? Well, you see what happens is he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we would know the righteousness of God. So when God looks at you through Jesus, he sees Jesus. He sees you through Christ. You are accepted and you are loved. He pretends. And by the way, parenting advice, tell your children what they can be, not what they're not. Tell yourself what you can be, not what you're not. Right? Tell yourself the right things. In Jesus' name, I am loved. Thank you, God. You love me. I choose to love myself. 
And you cannot grow. You cannot become like Jesus until you love yourself. Now, when you love yourself appropriately, you're loving God because God loves you. If you don't love my children and you mistreat my children, look out, Sandra will get you. Right? Seriously, right? I take offense. You treat my child with, hey, that's my child. So when you are abusing yourself by not liking yourself, thinking it's spiritual, you are abusing God because God loves you. Do you see that, everybody? No, yeah, I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by grace, but I'm also a child of God. I'm a son, I'm a daughter of God with a sin problem, but my sin does not define me. My Savior defines me, all right? So no, you are a child of God. And what does that mean? There's some scriptures here. But to all who did receive him, if you received Christ, if you did not, you're not a child of God. You're his creation and he loves you, but you've not received him, so you don't have it. You may believe in God, but until you receive him, you don't have him. So, but all who did receive him, you got to receive, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons through what? Through faith. And because you are sons, God has sent his spirit of a son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, that we have something inside of us where you and I can reach out to God. I need you. Father, notice Jesus says in his prayer to us. He does not say our prayer. We should thank you, Lord God. He says, no, our what? Our Father who art in heaven, not omnipotent creator of all the universe, Oh, God, no. He says, call him father. Call him dad. What? That was unbelievable in that time. You would never do that. God wants you to call him father, that you have access to him. You you don't have to go through a bunch of protocols because Jesus is your protocol. And And God is pretending you're Jesus because he looks at you through Christ Jesus. He believes in you. He's potential in you. So you need to start looking at him and becoming like him. You see, he loves us, and he wants us to do well. It's that simple, everybody. Crying, Abba, Father, so you're no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then heir through God. See what the love of the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is it did not know him. We are a child of God. Therefore, back to our passage, Be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, agape, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering. The Bible says, although he knew God, he did not give equality with God, but emptied himself, became that of a bondservant. So because of that, he made him the highest name that ever was. And every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord of hosts. And that's from Philippians chapter 2. I'm paraphrasing. And so be like Jesus who emptied himself that he was full. See, he became us so we could become him. You're not a God, and you'll never will be God. Let me make that very clear, everybody. You'll never be God, but we're called to be like God. Whatever you model after, you will become. This is is tough, everybody. We don't recognize we're being programmed all day long. All day long, we're seeing billboards. All day long, we're doing this, right? Right? Man, it's addicting. It's almost like donut holes. I mean, you just, you start popping those things in. You don't even realize how many did you have. I don't know. And we sit there, an hour goes by, two hours goes by. And we're sitting there, and they know that. They send you these images, and you start looking at it. Oh, should I get my hair that way? Oh, should I do this? Should I wear that? Oh, I have to have that. I got to look like that. I got to go on that kind of vacation. And you sit there all day long, and all of a sudden you have this imprint in your mind, and you go, oh, i got to do this, i got to do the other. And we walk around like, like, <laughs> like, like Frankenstein, the living dead. No, I want to look like Jesus. I don't want to look like somebody else, right? And so that's what we want to do. Whatever you model after, you will become. So why not model yourself after Jesus? How do you do that? You model yourself after Jesus by getting to know Jesus. You read the Bible not to read the Bible, to know it, You read the Bible to know God, 
not to know the Bible. Huh? There are people out there that know Aramaic, they know Greek, they know Hebrew, and they can parse it back and forth. They can speak it, they can memorize it, but they don't know God. They know the Bible, but they don't know God. We don't read the Bible to know the Bible. We read the Bible to know God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. You see, what happened? when you read the Bible, the Bible starts reading you if you read it in relationship. And I'm amazed. The more I read the Word of God, the more it reads me. And Maybe you're struggling with that. We want to provide an opportunity to help you to know how to have a relationship with God. Where I, Imagine if I go on a date with my wife, and all I'm doing is, is looking at her clothing, analyzing her clothing, and, and, and she's talking to me. I'm writing down what she says. I'm analyzing her sentence structure. I'm analyzing her facial expressions. Okay, she did. She smiled. And so when she smiled, these about 50 muscles just pulled up. Okay, these muscles. I start memorizing the muscles of her face and how she smiles. I start talking. I start analyzing what she said and her accent. I start looking at her clothing and saying, okay, this. And, and, oh, I noticed there's a moth that got a hold of that. And, you know, you say, and, and, and I'm not talking to her. I'm looking and examining her, but I'm not spending time with her. There's a difference between that. I said, forget all that. Let me know my wife. Let me look in her eyes. Let me talk to her. Let me listen to what she's saying and ask questions and get to know her. I'm not going to be looking at her hair, her earrings, while she's talking. I'm looking at her. I want to understand her. That's my goal. When that happens, I begin to know her. So when you read the Bible, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Lord, thank you that your spirit's here right now. Reveal to me who you are. And then you read the Bible that way. You see the difference, everybody? It's not about rules. It's about relationship. It, do the rules matter? Of course they matter. But that's not the reason we play. That's not the reason we are. We do it because we love God. So we're supposed to walk in love as Christ walked in love. So how to be good imitators? Know you're a child of God. Imitate by reflecting Christ. What would Jesus do? Remember that, everybody? Had a friend of mine saying he was sitting there and he was, and he was going to some place he shouldn't have gone and he had to open the door to go to the place. The, I'm not going to what place it was. He saw what would Jesus do. Oh my gosh, what am I doing here? <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, I don't need to be in this club. And he walked out and he realized because he saw what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do at Cornerstone? What would Jesus do with my family? What would Jesus? That's a great question to ask. Amen. And the truth is, everybody, when you follow Christ's way, you're better off. You really are. You're, I'm telling you, you want to see anxiety drop? Follow Jesus this way. Forgive. Think of other people. Don't think of yourself. Love other people. Don't compare yourself. Look to bless someone, not take some, not compare yourself. Right there. That's what the Bible says. You start feeling better right away. And help someone else out. Not because what you can get, because what you can give, and you start feeling good. Why? Because you become like God, and you're created to be like God. And when you start acting like God, you start having the joy of the Lord is my strength. So imitate by reflecting Christ, looking into the mirror. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, we say we look through a, a glass darkly, right? So I want to see what I look like. How do I look at myself? I look at Scripture, and I look at me. I look at Scripture, and I adjust. If my, <clears throat> if my hair's out of place, I'll put a little Holy Spirit gel, and I'll just go ahead like that. I see what I'm supposed to look like. I look in the mirror, and the mirror's showing me what Christ looks like, and I want to identify with Jesus. I want to put on the uniform like Jesus. I want to act like Jesus, right? If I had to put a Halloween costume on to be like Jesus, I'll put a Halloween costume on. Of course, he doesn't celebrate Halloween. How could you say that in church? Stop it. <laughs> Thank you. One person got it. <laughs> and by the way, don't be a heresy hunter. Okay, just be a lover of God. Okay, imitate by reflecting Christ. A child, listen to this, a child grows only by pretending he or she is something they're not. The only way you're going to grow, if you go to the gym, you're pretending something you're not. You can't push that weight up like you're supposed to, Right? You want to be a triathlete? You want to go and be an Iron Man? Like we have someone in our church who was an Iron Man? You may not be there yet, but you see a goal, and you go towards that goal, right? You pretend by doing and acting till you become. 
So a child grows by pretending he or she is something they're not. You need to see who you are in God. I'm a mighty man of God that passes the church, not for my ego, but for the kingdom of God. I have good motives. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to raise godly kids. I will not put up that my kids won't serve God. I'm going to contend with them until I break every capillary in my face by praying. They're going to serve God. They're, they're children of God. I'm going to believe that this church is going to grow. We're going to see people come to know Jesus Christ. We're going to change the world together by changing one life at a time. Why not believe the truth? Right? What happens doesn't happen. What happens if it does? I follow Christ. Right? A child grows only by pretending he or she is something or not. And <laughs> God, he's pretending you're Jesus, so you need to pretend you're Jesus too. Okay, everybody? We need to start pretending until we are tending to be Jesus. Pretend until you tend to be Jesus. And how long will that go on? For the rest of your life. And you know what the beautiful thing is? The freer you and I will become. I need you. You need me. We do it by the power of the Holy Spirit, which we'll get into in a couple of weeks from now. We're going to talk about how to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to be a community that changes together. What would Jesus do? So, how do you know if you are a son of God, a child of God, or you are an orphan? Okay, sometimes we feel like orphans. And orphans don't have the same rights as children. So how do you know? What do children have that orphans don't have? Well, children have acceptance as a child of God, not an orphan. Okay, that's how we do it, okay? We have access to God. A child has access to God. I don't have access to the governor of Connecticut. I don't have access to the, to, I don't have access to the president of the United States, but a son does, right? Oh, sorry. Oh, this is going <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> A little cough there. Okay. Access to God. I lost my train of thought. Okay. <laughs> okay, we need we have access to God. We have access to God. I don't have access to the president, right? But as a son, I would, right? I have access to my father. I can walk into the room. I can call him. I know the code of the garage code. I can walk in. I have keys to my parents' house. I'm allowed to go anytime I want to go. Why? I have access. I have access. That's what happens when you're a son or you're a daughter. You have access to them, and you have protection. I'm a son of God. You cannot treat me that way. You know what the good news is? The Bible says in Romans that no, nothing, not, your, not the past, not the future, not demons, not angels, not any principality, any creative thing will be able to separate you from the love of God through Jesus Christ. Nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing can separate you. We have protection, and here's another great protection, and we know that for those who love God, God, um, those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. No matter how bad your past has been, no matter what duress you have been through, God can turn a horrible situation and make something good out of it. He doesn't cause the situation to happen, but he can take your pain and make it a gain. He can take your mess and make a message. It doesn't mean he wants you to get that way. I've heard someone say, I praise God, I got on heroin, and now I, have a, uh, have a, I got free of drugs, and now I have a drug rehab center. I praise God I was an addict. No. God never wanted you to be an addict. He wanted you to get free, and he can use your pain to make you something good. Does that make sense, everybody? That's a protection we have. So, Lord, thank you. Your word says all things work together for good. Lord, this is pretty lousy. That just happened. But thank you, Father. Somehow, some way, I'm going to find good. And guess what happens? Oh, right? Works all things together for good. Guess what begins to happen? You start looking in faith. What's good in this circumstance? The Holy Spirit starts banging. Boom, boom. It's giving you a download. Now you find good in that horrible situation, and something good comes out of it. What you meant for evil, God meant for good. 
That's what happened to Joseph. Joseph knew that God was going to work it out for him. But God was with Joseph when he was in prison. A man of God in the book of Genesis. I don't have time to break it down. This is what can happen to us. You see, we have, uh, we have acceptance as a child of God, access to God, protection, and we have an inheritance. We have an inheritance that's ours. You see, in order to be a son, to be adopted in the days of the Romans and Greeks, if you got adopted, you would often adopt an adult. And what adoption would do is all, my, all the inheritance of the person who adopted you would go to that person who's adopted. So let's, let's just say I adopt, uh, I adopt Pastor Tom Bucket as my son. <laughs> and when I pass away, everything would go to him. Everything would, I have adopted all the rights, everything I have. That's what it means to be adopted. And so what's interesting is an inheritance. Now, if you think about the story in Luke chapter 11 about the, the, the prodigal son, if you're not familiar with the story, there was two children, an older son and a younger son, and the younger son said, hey, I want it now. And that's the problem, everybody. We want, we want, to, have the, we want to have joy now. No, first pay, then you play. He wanted, to, he wanted to play and then pay. No, pay first, play later. So I want my inheritance now, Father. And the only way you can really get your inheritance is the father's dead. So basically, he was saying, I want you dead so I can have your stuff. <laughs> basically. So he got his stuff, his inheritance. He went out and, you know, did the, whole, did the pirate thing. You know, wine, woman, and song. <laughs> did it, right? He was in a pig's pen. He is trying to eat the slop. What am I going to do? Even my father's slaves live better than me. I know what I'll do. I'll go back and I'll say, let me be a slave. I'm not worthy to be your son. And so what happens? He comes back. What happens? The father looks in the distance. Why does the father look in the distance? Because the father believes one day he's going to come back. I'm praying for him. And he comes back and the father runs to him, embraces him before he even repents, gives him a brand new coat, which represents that I accept you. He gave him a ring, and he put sandals on his feet, which means you're not a slave, you're a son, and he killed the fatted calf. Okay? He killed the calf, and he had a big party. That which is lost is found. But guess what happened? His older son was ticked off. I'm sweating up a storm here. I'm working for the inheritance. But this is the, why was the older brother so upset? Because the younger brother was taking the older brother's inheritance. Guess where that fatted cat came from? Not cat, calf. That calf came from the father, which belonged to the son, the older son. So he was, giving, he was giving his inheritance to the younger guy. But guess who Jesus is? He's our older brother. But instead of being upset with us, he delights in us. And he wants to see us to do well. He's our older brother that I want to be like. And he wants to accept us. He wants to bless us. I heard a story a number of years ago about a man, a multi, multi millionaire, and uh, he had a son that died at an early age. And uh, his son died about, at about 12 or 13 years old. And, and before his son died, his, his son, for a school project, tried to paint a picture of his father. And it was not very good looking at all. It was just whatever. And so the man died. The son died first, and the man died later on. And then he had an auction to sell all his stuff. And so the, the person, the, they were there, they're having the auction, and, uh, and all of a sudden people are trying to take different things, but there was someone in his household, the butler. The butler who worked for the man for many, many years, loved his boss, loved to work for the family, loved the son. He was an old man by now, and he came to the auction, and he said, and he raised his hand, and he said to auction that little thing. No one cared about that painting of, that, of, the, of the father, but the... Butler raised his hands. I'll take that. As soon as he took that and the gavel went on the table, the entire inheritance goes to the butler. For whoever takes my son has everything. When you and I give our lives to Jesus, all the riches of heaven, all the glory of God is accessible to us because we took the son. My identity is wrapped up in him. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I, I pray, first of all, Lord, I ask right now that you would touch hearts. If there's anyone here today, Lord God, who doesn't, has not given their lives to you, have not given their life to you, 
I pray now that right now, Lord, you would touch them, that you would draw them to yourself. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came not to condemn the world, but you came to save the world. For you so loved us that you took our place on the cross, took the payment that should have been ours. And if we give our life to you and receive what you did for us and give our life to you, we are now called children of God. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, let me ask you a question today. Have you given your life to Jesus completely? Do you believe he's a son of God? Have you given, it's not enough to believe in God. Have you given your life to God and say, God, I hand my life over to you. It's not my life, it's your life. If you've never done that, today's a day of salvation. I'm gonna pray a prayer in a few moments. Maybe you've never done it or maybe you've fallen away. Maybe you've been in church your whole life, but you're never really surrendered at all. Today's the day. How many of you say, Pastor, today I want to give my life to Christ for the first time. I want to renew my commitment. I'm going all in. How many be honest enough and say, I want to give Christ everything today? Just raise your hand nice and high. Is that you today? Before I can see it, I can pray. Anyone else today? Thank you. Anyone else? Let's pray this prayer in our hearts and our minds and online as well. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross and rose again from the dead. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, both known and unknown. And today, I choose, I choose to step down from being in charge of my life. I hand my life over to you. I declare my life is not my own. Thank you. I am now your child. In Jesus' name. You want to look up here real quick. If you prayed that prayer, there's a connection card in the front pocket of your seat. You want to pull it out, or you can also dial online as well. There's a number. We want to help you with the next steps. We're not perfect people. There's no such thing as a perfect church. We are a people, a community that's walking together to become more like we want to be imitators of Jesus. We want to help each other imitate Jesus until Christ is seen so clearly in all of our faces and all of our eyes. So we want to encourage you to fill that out and after that. I want to pray for the rest of us. Can we just once ahead? I want to pray for you right now. Some of you are not loving yourself. Some of you are so hard on yourself. You hate yourself. Maybe even cut yourself because you hate yourself so much. Jesus was cut, so you never have to cut. He was wounded, so you never have to be wounded like that. God loves you. And so that, whatever that thought process is inside of you that hates yourself, that's not of God. That's of the enemy. So I'm going to pray over you right now in Jesus' name. You want to repeat after me in your own heart. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that I am accepted by you. I am loved by you. And today, I ask you to forgive me of not loving myself like you love me. I choose today to love myself because you love me. I command any dark spirit, any thought processes that are not of Jesus Christ to leave me now in Jesus' name. I am a son. I am a daughter of God. I love myself because you love me. Lord Jesus, I pray that we would look into the mirror and we would see the invitation that you are calling us unto yourself to become freer, to become greater, to become like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.